anyway, so uh, certainly there are a lot of exciting things that are happening uh, in, in the field of complementary and alternative medicine. I think what it takes is not so much of, um, you know, we holding on to uh, our so-called little things. In fact, if you look at what I have gone through uh, humbly, I mean, I don't know everything. But then again, it's very interesting that I learned the basics of, uh, of something uh, that, is, that was so empirical and so old and so traditional and uh, simply because I did not have a, an open mind to receive it or to go ahead to find ways of convincing myself that this is something which is very much valid, uh, I end up looking on to the other, into the other side and yet that did not really give me all of the solutions. Uh, and ended up now coming a full circle. And in fact, a lot of the hypotheses in, chi in traditional Chinese medicine are explainable nowadays uh, in scientific terms. Like, for instance, yin and yang, we can look at it as a balance between psychic AMP and psychic GMP. And in fact, it's been verified and, and, and it's been, uh, been, uh, been re well researched in uh, countries that are interested in uh, looking into these modalities, including Japan and China. And, um, you know, I believe it, it's, it, it definitely has, uh, has, has a lot of uh, 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 credence in it. It's, it's amazing. So he, treating cancer, there are a lot of angles. Of course, we don't just treat cancer in our clinic. We also treat a lot of multiple sclerosis. We treat a lot of neurological uh, diseases, including paraplegia, uh, uh, we, 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 we have treated also a number of uh, kids uh, with cerebral palsy uh, and hyperbaric, which I learned from Dr. Seenblog, uh, but then again I expanded it a little bit further, and we are also treating a lot of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis successfully uh, with uh, hyperbaric oxygen uh, treatment. Of course, it's not as straightforward as just getting someone to go through a series of uh, hyperbaric oxygen uh, treatment. Of course, there's a lot of other modalities that has to go along with it. And the reason why I had to buy two hyperbaric oxygen chambers was because my ex-wife uh, was paralyzed in a car accident because of a C6 um, uh, compression fracture, uh, burst fracture and a C7 compression fracture. And uh, when I found out that there's a possibility uh, that hyperbaric oxygen might modulate the activity of fibroblasts to do some healing and repairing of bodily cells, including maybe neurological tissues. Uh, uh, you know, we, we try uh, a few uh, hyperbaric oxygen treatment, and I decided to buy my own uh, hyperbaric oxygen uh, chamber uh, for the sake of treating her. And you know something? It's amazing that today she is walking with a walker and she has full bladder and bowel control. And in fact, uh, even uh, CBC, the Canadian Broadcast, uh, uh, Broadcasting Corporation, expressed interest at one time maybe to do a special uh, documentary on her and decided it was too hot to handle. They decided not to do it. And talk about too hot to handle. Uh, you know, there was a, a, a patient uh, that we had treated that had cancer recurrence three times that she has, should have been dead according to the conventional field um, something like six years ago. And um, she's in very good shape. She's in remission. Of course, we did something special with her. Uh, we uh, did a private project, which we, thank goodness, we might not have to do it anymore because of the fact that these wonderful antigen-specific transfer factors available nowadays. Uh, for that particular person, I ran a rope. So what we did was I had read up on Dr. Futenberg's uh, work uh, on transfer factors and um, decided to culture to buy a pregnant cow uh, that was about uh, seven weeks to freshening and we actually injected blood that we drew from her uh, into the peritoneum of this cow uh, and then we collected the colostrum and that was part of the treatment as antigen or tumor antigen specific uh, transfer factors to treat her and the story was so moving uh, that a national television network called women's television uh, network uh, WTN uh, decided 
to move an entire camera crew all the way from Winnipeg across the country to film at her home at my clinic and they did an entire documentary on a healing path mm. and today I have a letter of apology apologizing from their legal department that maybe it's not very timely to air such a documentary and the documentary was meant to be for a show called Beyond Medicine so I can kind of joke at it to say they dropped the ball because it's a little too hot that this is really beyond, beyond medicine. Anyways, so there are these, you know, I can ramble on and on and on and on about all these wonderful stories, uh, but I, you know, with, with the invitation of Ralph, I thought it would be a wonderful thing to share, uh, uh, maybe, you know, a little bit of my life story, maybe a little bit of where I came from, maybe who I am, maybe what I've done. Uh, you know, it's a clinic that's tucked away in, uh, in Vancouver, uh, you know, um, we try to keep a very low profile simply because maybe the hostility out there, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, a lot of things that we do, uh, you know, uh, uh, can be uh, controversial and, uh, you know, of course I can go on and on and talk about a lot of uh, other things including uh, we uh, also uh, modulate the ratio of dephosphorylation and phosphorylation with, uh, can you believe, uh, a compound very similar to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, uh, to down-regulate the oncogene expression, uh, you know, and uh, we also uh, use um, uh, homeopathic uh, cancer preparations to, uh, to counteract uh, the, uh, the uh, expre or to, 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 to effectively uh, suppress the expression of the oncogene uh, and at the same time, we also use single-strand DNA to increase the repair rate of uh, DNAs uh, that have been uh, nicked or damaged. Uh, and also at the same time, uh, uh, we uh, uh, also uh, uh, support patients through radiation treatment by giving them intravenous hydrogen peroxide, which nobody would ever even think of, uh, to actually effectively increase the a sustainable interstitial action uh, uh, level uh, so that there's a higher kill rate by the radiation and at the same time there will be an increased repair rate of the uh, NIC DNA sequence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, immune cells and in fact it prompted the uh, cancer hospital local in town uh, to uh, start a trial of uh, allowing patients who are going through radiation treatments to breathe a mixture of 80% oxygen and 20% carbon, carbon dioxide called carbogen. And in fact, they're seeing a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderfully increased uh, uh, cure rate and uh, the uh, side effect of radiation uh, is so minimized. It's just uh, so, much more, so much less that it's absolutely incredible. So I, I believe that there's only one medicine uh, on earth that we need to uh, get to, you know, instead of taking size, instead of seeing, you know, who we are or how come you're over there. Uh, and I guess the, the main thing is, is we just need to do our best to do whatever we can practically to, uh, to help the people that we care for.